Whereas we welcome back the Admiral Two Star, Bill Stubblefield. How are you doing, Billy? Good morning, Rob. Great to be here as always. I like that nickname for you now, Two Star. <laughs> two Star. The old Two Star. It's quick. <laughs> it is. Says it all. Right there. Also, Maria Lawrence and she of the Outdoor Shower. Good morning, Maria. <laughs> Good morning. I, and she of the Queen Bee t shirt that was not appropriate today for work wear. So. Probably not, but yeah. still. I, I know. I have to ask you now. Because Lake Thomas is basically your backyard, <laughs> yeah. why not an outdoor shower at yeah. the Lawrence in estate? Well, we could we could certainly do that. We've had a lot of work on our property yeah. these past couple of weeks, so now, we this, could have just put it in. And this would be in addition uh, in addition to you and the judge and Will be for everybody else. Anybody hiking uh, Lake Thomas, they could use they your could outdoor shower. They could just use our outdoor shower. Or It'd if, be very if, convenient. if that's full, they can come to your indoor yeah, shower. I'll, I'll bring that up. I'll bring that up with the judge. See what he says. I don't think. It's a big fat no if you're just saying put a shower in i don't think it's too much to ask for a bathroom outside too, i would think so yeah if you're gonna go well you know, let me shower. tell you we had a fabulous outdoor portage on that was high end we did the rehearsal dinner for my daughter's wedding on our property on our tennis court um and um we had this air-conditioned two-person I'd never seen a portage on like that. It was very nice. Let's let's welcome in House Majority Leader <laughs> Eric, because, Eric Householder. On because, that note, Eric. Not, because I had a story I was going to add to it. Rob's cutting me off. Oh, at we the don't, knees. We don't We're have going time. to Eric now. <laughs> Eric, anyway. Eric, let's say you're you're sitting around the office one day and you get a call. You need to install an AC unit into a very fancy portage on. You taking that job? You know, I, I may consider it, but I was going to go a different direction. I, well, first off, good morning, everyone. Good but, morning. Uh, yeah, it's a great segment there on the Stubblefield Institute. Uh, Thank you. Unfortunately, I've never had the opportunity to go down there and speak. Um, I've been offered, but I've always been busy. But, uh, no, I've seen some of those nice uh, uh, areas that you're talking about, <laughs> Maria, at, at NASCAR races. Sometimes they'll have some nice ones out there. But, uh, yeah, that's crazy. Oh, so, I want to see a two-story portage on <laughs> Yeah. Well, you had to walk up the steps to to get in, so yeah. it was something, because I was like, do we really need this? Because our house has several bathrooms. My daughter, who lives across the street with her husband mm -hmm. now, also has several bathrooms, and she's like, do we want 60 people traipsing in and out? And I'm like, good point. So we got this thing. I was like, okay, everybody use the bathroom, because it's so cool. So. <laughs> I wish you'd have taken some photos. I should have. I'm sorry. I'm going to tell my story. <laughs> I, I can't stop you. <laughs> I was, I, I Eric, was you you got to wait four no, minutes. But Eric kind of led me to. Uh, we had a pig roast up place for 30 years. Oh, yeah. And uh, we'd have 150, 200 people there. The very first one we had, not familiar with the water table, not familiar with the uh, fragility of the wells and the like, about halfway through, and we, we did not have porta pilots. Everything came inside. The well ran dry. Oh. And talking about a mess, everybody was in line, and the Johns would not flush. It was I, my poor wife. I didn't think she was ever going to get get over that traumatic experience. So what did you do? We, they we, never had the pig roast no, again. No, <laughs> That's we, for sure. We used the woods as much as we could. It was, it was a mess. It was really a mess. Well, that's so, so, Rob, let me ask you, <laughs> fancy Porter Johns, do you need more air conditioning or should you have more ventilation? A combination of both. <laughs> right? so Good point, go. Eric. Those, Good those, point. Can be, those can get pretty hot in the summer. <laughs> that's right. Uh, How do we digress? I don't, uh, you know, start, it's, it's, I started the it. The outdoor I shower. Is really where it I all apologize. Began. I apologize. I apologize. The, out, the outdoor shower. Uh, Eric, we're almost at the end of the state's fiscal year. Any indication on how this month is going to conclude you revenue? Know, I was worried you were going to ask me about that. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to look at the revenue numbers. I looked down at the time. I saw I was getting close on time. I looked at the date. I was like, oh, man, he's going to ask me something about the revenue numbers, but I haven't looked. Sorry. All right. I know you thought you might be on pace for $800 million prior I to the governor's revised um, estimates. Revenue as yes, and I, as a, I think we're still going to make that eight hundred million dollars. Um, but uh, and I apologize to your listeners, I just didn't get a chance to look up any of the revenue numbers. Well, it's not uh, the end of the month yet, so you're uh, okay. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. Hey, and then in regards to um, the in, you, you folks as a, as a unit, uh, the looks like the entire house sent out a press release stating your solidarity and endorsement of Patrick Morrissey for governor. Yes. Patrick had reached out to me about a week ago 
and uh, had asked me, you know, as the majority leader, would I be willing to uh, see if, if the members of the House would show complete unity in endorsing Patrick Morsey for governor. And I said, absolutely, absolutely, without any hesitation. I'm, first off, Patrick's a great friend. Uh, back when I first ran in 2009, he came out, he supported me. And then when he ran, when I got elected, and when he ran in 2012, I supported Patrick. In fact, uh, I was also uh, one of his MCs when he announced for a governor. So uh, Patrick's a great friend, and I was willing to do this. And uh, so yesterday I sent it out to three radio stations, you were being one of them, Metro News and WEPM, and I sent it out to 25 statewide newspapers and also sent it to the uh, AP for, for pickup. So uh, this is my second radio interview in two days, and uh, the the crux of it was just to show that the House of Delegates is in full support and 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 showing um, basically unity for Patrick Morris, the our nominee for governor. Bill was the first person I saw bring this up, and that is that Morrissey started out in the primary, in that four way primary, and yes. it's about thirty thirty four percent. He wound up with that number, 34, I think it was, percent. Then in a poll that was conducted, a three-way poll with Morrissey and then two non-Republicans, he was right at that number once again, yes. which I regard as concerning because the state registration for Republicans is at 40 percent, yet he keeps coming up below that number. Do you share that concern as well? I don't. Just keep in mind, now that the Senate, the Senate uh, a week prior to that came out in full support, and now the House, I think you're going to see more and more traction with, uh, with Patrick Morrissey. You know, Patrick always seems to turn his campaign promises into action. I mean, he's got a record that proves that. And if uh, the, the issues that I listed on this uh, uh, press release are basically from his website, you know, he's like I said, he'll t he'll take those campaign promises and he'll turn them into action. He's always been that type of leader, and um, you know, most of us know that every time that there's a governor or every year there's always new legislative and and there's uh, new executive initiatives uh, that must be adopted. And there's always some conflict, uh, but I think Patrick he's going to be an effective manager or or. or as I would say, an effective CEO, because that's really what you are as governor. Um, I think he's going to focus on, you know, increasing the efficiency of state government. And um, and I think in turn that just builds the public's uh, faith and trust back into government. And that's the type of man that I think we need as governor. And uh, Patrick will do a great job. Bill, do you want to follow up on that 34%? Yeah, I'm, I'm puzzled with that, uh, uh, Eric. And I and I've never heard anyone really address that uh, with uh, that would make me change my mind. I just the fact that he's uh, he's below the 40, 44 uh, percent and the fact he's only was three above a candidate who's not declared three or four point above a candidate who's not declared. Uh, I just uh, maybe there's more to it, but I could see I see that as troublesome, troublesome well, to that. Don't forget. Yeah. Too, Bill. He, I mean, he did have three other viable candidates in that race. Uh, when you have a four-way race, I mean, obviously I was in a four-way race. Your, your outcomes are a lot lower. But uh, I think in time, as more and more people see Patrick being an effective leader, we've seen him in a role as attorney general. He's done great for, for the state and protecting the state from, you know, federal overreach. I think you'll see him become a more of, like I said, an effective CEO and, and uh I think you'll see his popularity increase over time. And you may well be right. But why did you think it was necessary uh, to have the uh, uh, the House or the Senate uh, declare they were supportive? Uh, being a cynic yes. at heart, that does not that does not resonate with me at all. I suspect any candidates, any Republican candidate for any office, uh, you'd find the same endorsement from the House or the Senate. So what did that buy you? Well, this shows you unity. Uh, in the House, for instance, there's uh, 89 Republicans. There's 85 members on this list. There are two members that could not do any endorsement, Todd Kirby or Tom Fass. They're running for uh, judicial positions. 
Uh, there's another member who resigned. There hasn't been a replacement yet, and there is one member that I, I tried desperately to get a hold of, left several messages, and did not get a hold of, of that person. But that shows complete unity coming out of the people's house. And, um, you know, 85 Republicans strong that are supporting Patrick Morrissey for governor. That puts that puts to rest any of the, uh, you know, we had a pretty contentious primary race, but now we're going to come together and we're going to back our nominee and we're going to do everything that we can to get Patrick Morrissey elected as governor. So um, to your knowledge, Eric, has this been done before? Is this something commonplace in a in a statewide election to take one body of the of the legislature, and maybe the Senate's going to do that as well. But the Senate has already done it. Oh, they have. Yes, okay, yes. they did it before the House. Yes. Okay, so is this? I mean, I don't remember it, but obviously, I don't remember a lot of things. So, um, fairly common or not so common? Uh, not so common, but I think it's a great opportunity for Patrick to say, "Hey, look, I've got complete uh, show of unity." And uh, let's let's move forward. Let's do great things for the state and for our citizens. And uh, I think it's a great idea. That so means when he asked me when he asked me to do it, I thought without like I said without any hesitation, said absolutely. So that means um, if when elected um, that you all are in lockstep, that there will be never any contention between the legislature and the rubber stamps. Um, yeah, yeah rubber stamps. exactly. <laughs> You're going to sing Kumbaya and hold no, hands, right? No, no, that's what I mentioned earlier. <laughs> okay. Some type of conflict. You will always see some type of conflict. But from Patrick's pers- pers- perspective, I think, you know, he's more of a leader He's more willing to inspire others to help get the job done. And, uh, you know, he's going to be that effective CEO. I think it'll be different. You, you'll see a completely different administration with the Patrick Morrissey administration versus a Jim Justice administration. And uh, I just think in the long run, you're going to see his popularity, Patrick Morrissey's popularity numbers increase. And you're going to see a lot of good things that he does because. You've known him before. Every one of his campaign promises, he turns them into action, and he gets it done. His record proves it. Is there some nervousness, Eric? Uh, of course, the old saying, you either run unopposed or run scared. But is there some nervousness that would would encourage you to take action for the House to do this uh, unified endorsement? No, none, none whatsoever. I think right now this shows that Patrick Morrissey is the best qualified candidate out there. Uh, obviously, the front runner on the Democrat side is uh, Steve Williams, but uh, Patrick Morrissey's credentials 100% shows that he's an effective leader. He's been a proven conservative, and he's been a fighter for the state and for our citizens, and he's going to continue to uh, to do that. So, was part of this necessitated by the story about the 20 or so big name Republican donors who were not? thrilled with the selection of Morrissey in the primary, and they, in fact, reached out to Manchin to run against Morrissey. I don't know that that to be a fact. I mean, look, there's always, nobody wants to lose. I mean, I lost my election, and but it's time to move on. And how do you move on? Well, you turn that, that previous election that you lost, you turn it into something positive, and you get behind our Republican nominee, and you show the support. And I think we've done that in the House by getting 85 out of 89 members on board to say, hey, yes, we're supportive 100%. Remember, I sent out a, a mass text to our members. Some I actually had to call because, you know, I didn't get a hold of them via text. And every one of them either responded back or called me and said, absolutely, I'm on board with Patrick Morrissey. Eric, let's, did you have a follow-up on that, Maria? Um, not, it just sort of dawned on me. Yeah. So, again, if and when, Eric, mm-hmm. um, uh, Patrick Morrissey is elected governor, are you looking for a spot in the cabinet in some, um, some way, shape, or form uh, in his administration? I'm not, not at this time. And like I told you before, when I came in, oh, what was it, two weeks ago? Um, if there's an opportunity, I would love to work with uh, Patrick Morrissey's uh, administration. I think he's a good man. I think he's going to do great things. But uh, right now, we haven't had any of those conversations. And uh, But I do believe that he's going to have to hire 
you know, strong managers in these cabinet uh, positions, and, and and whoever they are, they need to be held accountable. You know, uh, because if you're gonna, if the CEO's job is to improve efficiency within the state, you need to have good people on your team to be able to do that. All right, Eric. Off this topic, unless Bill had a follow up. Yeah, there. I, follow up. Uh, uh, looking at the previous administration, looking at the various cabinet members, uh, would you see that one cabinet is above the equals? Is, is there one one particular cabinet that will require the uh, more leadership than the other cabinets? Right now, yes. There's several challenges out there that we see, with especially with DHHR. And I would even go as far as saying highways with our Secretary of Transportation. So I think those two agencies need to have some focus on. And I think even if I'm not mistaken, Patrick has also mentioned that in several of his conversations on your stations uh, or station. And uh, But I think it's it's important for Patrick to surround himself with good people, good managers in these cabinet positions. And I think he's going to do that. Now we turn the page. <laughs> right. I have one more, Rob. My third attempt <laughs> to turn the page. Okay. Uh, and Eric, you get to explain this again because you've done it like 10 previous times and it still hasn't sunk in, I guess, because there still are questions in regards to what triggers a tax cut in West Virginia. <laughs> and when I ask others yeah. to explain it, most of them say you really need to talk to Eric Halsolder about I this, about know, the specifics. I, just to make it simple, remember, we have up to a 10% tax cut per year. So the the way the triggers were written, it limits the amount of government spending to about 5% per year. All right? So if the state decides to do a state pay raise uh, for uh, teachers and, and state workers at a 5% pay raise, you take that 5% and you add it to whatever the current inflation rate is. So if we're pushing close to, I believe, 4%, so 5% spending... 4% inflation rate, you're at 9%, you're only eligible for a 1% tax cut. Now, in times of less spending, uh, a lower in inflation rate, you're going to have a higher tax cut. And it was developed to make sure that we would never become like Kansas. Now, it's going to be a lot slower process, but you're not going to get yourself in any problems unless you decide to change the triggers, do away with the triggers, that could get you in some hot water, or if your if your spending is going out of control. But that's really that's the whole the nutshell of how the triggers how 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 it uh, simply works. Eric, the inflation rate. Uh, do you use that from the national level, or do you determine that uh, locally the, with the state? No, the national the consumer price index. You take the consumer price index, and there is a formula, and you base it off of 2019. But to dumb it down to make it easy. You just take your rate of spending at the state level, add it to the inflation rate, and whatever that number is, subtract it from 10, because you can have up to a 10% cut, and that uh, remainder is is your eligible tax cut. And, and when you say dumb it down, I assume you're referring to Simple. Rob as opposed to Maria no, no, myself. No, no. no I, I was thinking more the opposite, Bill. Uh, no, no. I mean, I, maybe my poor choice of words, just to make it easier to understand. You know, to get into the mathematical formula, everybody would say what? But no, you just take the CPI number and you multiply it uh, to the base rate of the 2019 revenue. That'll give you another number, and if that number is higher then what your current base budget is, then you get uh, you don't get a tax cut. If it's lower, you get a tax cut. So in simple terms, you just take the inflation rate plus your uh, spending and subtract it from your 10% tax cut, and whatever the difference is, that's what you can get. You notice he learned very quickly. He used the word simple as opposed to dumb for Rob. Yeah. <laughs> <The Yeah>. <laughs> I was just set, thinking it sounded like an algebraic equation. I'm sort of having no. some PTSD with some parentheses. What do you do first? And you do the parentheses kind of first, don't you? Yeah, you do the parentheses yeah. You know what first. I'm going to do before I leave? <laughs> My last day is January the 8th. I'm going to write the formula out, and I'm going to submit it to Rob. That way he, he'll have it, and every year he will be able to predict 
what the tax cut's going to be. I'm going to put it on a whiteboard right behind me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And everyone yeah. will be able to see it every segment of the show. Yeah. yeah. So, Eric, if it's that simple, then how is it that uh, very few of the fe- uh, people we interview can actually explain it? Uh, it's a little, It's not as simple as, you know, I always look for ways to make it easier for someone to under, uh, understand something. When you start explaining math over the uh, radio, everybody's eyes glaze over. But it is it is a mathematical formula. So Very nice. So and I and I've promised our delegates in our area too. I said, look, I'm going to also give you this formula so you can keep it in your back pocket because I know sooner or later Rob Mary is going to ask you, <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't done it yet. You haven't but, done it uh, yet, but you will before you go out the door. Before I go out the door, yeah. Yeah, my last day is January the eighth. Well, who's who's the keeper of the formula that ultimately does the equation to determine well, if there's a tax? Code? If you really want to know, the formula is there in the actual bill context itself. Hey, Eric, can yeah. I can I make a suggestion? Instead yes. of just bearing it in the uh, in the bill itself, write out the formula, give it to Rob, Rob only, and can you imagine <laughs> the power that Rob would have over the state as a whole? Everybody would have to come to Rob for the formula. I could see him holding the next Secretary of Revenue speak yeah. to the fire and say, "Hey, look, you know, I, you're, this is your current budget." You know, your budget is uh, slightly higher than 2019, and this is what your target spending is. I think we're going to get a 4% tax cut or something. <laughs> and can you imagine the amount of power Rob would have if you if you did that I, for him? You know, I'm willing to do that for my friend Rob Mario. You know, I'm willing to do that. So I like the way this is shaping up <laughs> around Your here. smart friend, Rob That's Mario. Right. I like the way yeah. this is coming down the yeah, track. Not the, hey, not the dumb right friend. Now. Not, the, not yeah. the two others of... His dumb no, friends guys, here. All of you guys are great. Ultimately, Eric, who does who does the actual inputting of the math to determine if there yeah. is a tax cut? It's the Department of Secretary of Revenue. Secretary of Revenue does. Yeah, they'll look. The July CPI numbers will come out, and by August, you know, we'll know what that answer is. And you've seen other news accounts. Uh, our current acting Secretary uh, of Revenue is uh, Larry Pack. You've heard him say probably a modest 2% tax cut. But, hey, I'll, any tax cut, I'll take it. Yeah. And then the next part of that math becomes making it clear what a 2% tax cut is. So if, you're, yeah. if your rate is 4%, that 2% doesn't mean it goes down to 2 no. That would be a 50% tax cut. Right, right. That 2% will also be distributed against all income tax brackets. Yes. So you may only see a 002 Percentage or point oh two percentage drop in one bracket. Right. You know, I'm just making that up. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So instead of paying five point three five percent tax, you may now pay five point three three percent tax. <laughs> yeah, it's so simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 we'll just if I was in charge of the tax system, I would just eliminate state income taxes and go with the consumption tax. Yeah. Well, the beauty of the formula is really the trigger is to limit spending to five percent. If you're serious about cutting taxes, don't, there's only one way of doing it, is to limit your, your discretionary spending, mm-hmm. keep it in check, and also, I mention this time and time again, economic theory says if you want more of something, you have to tax, tax uh, less of it. So we're putting economic theory to the test to see if that's the case. Eric, great to talk with you again. Yep. The pleasure is always ours, and I want you to know – that you made Bill's morning because he got two shots in on me this morning, and he got he got faster on the trigger too because I didn't get a chance to get the shots in. He, but just remember he that formula me. that formula that I give to you is going to be password protected, so he'll never know your password. <laughs> okay, <It's> proprietary, Bill. <laughs> proprietary. <laughs> Eric's always good talking with you. Yeah, it see, is see indeed. Bill. See you, Murray.